for people who are, you know, there are loads of people now who are looking for butterflies. People are making checklists, people are taking counts, but it should not stop there. In India, uh, work with butterflies are restricted to, to some extent to, you know, listing butterflies of different, different places, seasonal listing, taking counts nowadays. And then there are some research happening on phenogenetics and other aspects of butterfly, in particular, some two, three, four labs across India. But, uh, uh, but you know, as butterfly is one of the very common, but it, it's, it's a solitary insect. They don't live together like bees and ants, and they don't come back to their nests or hives, or they are not insects who are like the bees and the ants who goes to a, a place every day, every night for their roost or something. So uh, working with butterflies, working with butterflies or working with insects which are solitary need much more effort than working with those who lives in groups and has a place of stay, fixed place of stay for at least some time. So I want to interact with you, all of you who are present in this meeting today, to have shared some ideas and also to get some ideas from your end to understand what you are thinking of doing or what you are planning of planning to do with, you know, with your likings for butterflies in the field of research or in the field of monitoring. Even if you are not doing your PhD, even if you are not doing you know, serious science, but you can do a lot of things involving butterflies, uh, even alone on a regular basis with interaction with people like us who are doing it for years. And you can get to know a hell lot of new things about this charismatic animal. So uh, just to give you a clue that what type of thing I am uh, planning to discuss today, is like you have seen many butterflies. So there are many common butterflies which are even seen in the urban landscape. Even you can see the, uh, in your you know towns and in your, your place, maybe in your workplace, in your school or colleges on a regular basis. But beyond seeing, what have you noticed? Have you noticed that what particular time they are mostly into feeding, what particular time they are doing something else? how they are behaving with other species of butterflies, how they are dealing when there are lot many of them and the number of flowers present in that patch is much less or relatively less. I'm just, I just want to ask you questions like this and want to hear questions like this, your observations, anything like this, if those observations have fascinated you, like these types of things. So, uh, 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 just but, one interruption. Whoever has a question can unmute and ask. Huh, Mane, it's, uh, you can please unmute yourself and ask the question one by one. If uh, suddenly I don't want to have too many questions together, so just keep an eye and you can keep start asking questions and share your ideas. Because once we are now, we have a significant number of people in India. in various states who are interested in butterflies knows a few butterflies for sure. On a regular basis, they are yet going into field, they're making checklists, but that is not the end. That is the beginning of your working life with butterflies. What next? That's why we term this as beyond butterfly watching. Beyond butterfly watching, we are now counting. Now beyond counting, beyond watching, what, what, what are other type of work you can do? what you have thought of doing, if you have any ideas, it's not only, you know, taking, uh, going into molecular level or genetics level, apart from them, uh, that various ecological thing, various ecological aspects can be covered. And those are fascinating enough to, you know, to keep you engaged for years. So I would like to have some questions from you to, you know, keep this interaction 
like so anyone anything any any sort of uh, question without interaction this session will not get to the uh, you know get to its objective I mean this session is for interaction this session is for people to ask questions ask ideas that you are not sure of whether your idea is right or wrong whether your idea can take you to some level where you can answer some questions related to ecological aspects or ecological aspects of butterfly. So everybody is mute or everybody is mute and not in the Zoom meeting room. So I have a question like uh, when butterflies go to sleep, uh, do you think that they are actually like, uh, is their uh, state of awareness in general decreased or are they aware of what, to what extent? Namrut, it can be a question, Prerna Chandra, what she had asked. Prerna, you can unmute and ask. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, so I wanted to know why butterfly names are um, based on other animals and birds name like plain tiger or common leopard and why are they not derivative of their own species? Doesn't taxonomy help in raising awareness like that? Uh, a very good question, but you know, it's always uh, the bigger things are more common to people. You know, the tigers, they are very, very visible. They are very much talked about the leopard, the tiger, and many other things. And so, when you associate a smaller thing which are not that visible, which are not that you know prominent in the landscape, otherwise, visually, so it gets a basic you know attention that okay, I can uh, tell you a story. One day I was in Sundarban in, in the deep inside Sundarban, and I suddenly shouted white tiger, white tiger. So uh, a significant number of people, they run towards me hurriedly. Like, Where is the white tiger? I said, there is the white tiger, a butterfly called white tiger. So, and then suddenly so many people among the whole lot, few were furious <laughs> on me that you are, you are seeing white tiger in Sundarbans and expecting us to see a butterfly. But some out of them were really interested Okay, so there is a butterfly called white tiger. There are butterflies and tiger. So these names are associated with a purpose to, you know, drag a bigger attention towards the charismatic creatures, which are least studied up to a certain point of time. There are people who are mad about butterflies, but there are much more people who are mad about tigers and leopards and bigger things. So this is one of the reasons. But there are butterflies which are name in association with their various habits or their host plants, like the pea blue, the gram blue, the hedge blue type of thing. You know, there are butterflies which are named with their, you know, more morphological characters like the common map, which has certain lines which depict map-like on their on their wings and on their wing pattern. So there are uh, butterflies which are having uh, various names with either taxonomic, uh, taxonomic means morph morphological thing depicted in the name, or uh, with the host plants, or with the you know area of roaming around those things associated. But there are butterflies which are tagged with certain bigger animals that you have like to say, with a purpose that it gives them a prominence among the nature lovers that there are butterflies which get something similar to the tiger. A similar thing happened with the common leopard. So in uh, near Boidhubati Khal, we, we have a group called Sandevat. We used to go for butterfly and bird watching every weekend for years now. So there is a place called Boidhubati Khal. Suddenly one 
one of the member that screaming leopard, 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 and we were like, where is the leopard? <laughs> How come a leopard is is there in the in in, in it's it's very near to Kolkata. It's absolutely a urban landscape, and someone is screaming leopard, leopard, leopard. Then it is a common leopard butterfly. So these are the things why these things are associated. There are stripes, so the tigers are, you know, in general, all the tiger butterflies are having some stripes, which is there in the tiger as well. And when there is a butterfly from the same genus without the stripes, we call this same tiger. So there we put the morphological thing into in the name as well. So this is very important. and. And you know, in in the name, uh, in the name, there lies various other things. You know, we we uh, we run a group from NCBS that I found butterflies. So uh, there are many common names which are having three sections, like Monipur map. One of the butterfly which was renamed from Mongol. Mongol was its earlier name. Now we call it Monipur map. Why we call it Monipur map now? Uh, I was a bit clueless in the initial stage why why a butterfly is renamed. Came to Nagaland with a group of butterfly experts from UK and uh, Australia. So suddenly, one of the person who is a very uh, senior person in the field of butterfly study that I saw a butterfly which is very similar to European map. So I immediately asked, well, how, how, how does a European map look like? Then he shows me an image of European map in mobile. And I found that it's very close to the butterfly we call now Monipur map. So this map, the European map and the Monipur map are two very similar looking species. In, in, in case one, the European map, the type local type location, the locality of the butterfly occurring is Europe. And Monipur map, that particular fellow is described from its type locality was in Monipur, so Monipur map. So this is how names are, you know, interlaced. Names are like, you know, another there are, you know, most of the Britishers have given English common English names to the butterflies. And you know, there is a strict amount of racism you can find in the naming. You know, in general, in India, we put English name to our dogs and cats, you know, Tommy, this and that. Most of the dog names, you will never find a dog called Vishwanath, you will never find a dog called Timon, but you can uh, definitely find dogs named Tommy, Harry, Lucy, etc. And similarly, those butterflies which are habituated to, you know, taking taps from various animal excreta. They were named like Raja, Begum, and Nawab by the Britishers. So what the Nawab is eating, it is on the ship of some fellow Indian. So this was another aspect of the name given to these butterflies. So these are various, various things are there. It's not very simple. I mean, naming a butterfly has different, different level of interest inscribed in those names and you have to understand the ent it in entirety. Any other question like this? So these type of things I want to discuss because you know, then you get to see the same butterfly with a different mindset in the coming days. So now whenever you are seeing a Nawab, Nawabs are the, you know, they are the eminent uh, hierarchical people from Indian origin. Nabobs, Rajas, and Begum, all those things. And incidentally, all those butterflies are named as that who are mostly taking animal excreta or something. So it's sort of defaming the hierarchical position in some their aspect. What I found, you know. They, they have uh, these uh, butterfly also have very strong characters. They are they are very strong. Either they have a very robust flight. They are very hardy. They have characters. Also, 
that is one of the reason because they are associated with characters like you know uh, the like nawabs or badsha begum etc but also parallelly they used to take animal excreta rather than nectar on a regular basis as their diet so another question what are the other things means what are the other things which need to be considered while watching butterflies so while watching butterflies you if you just keep on watching them without watching what, among what type of surroundings they are roaming around foraging or you know using what type of thing in why you are on mute hello yeah we can hello. hear you. okay so if you really want to understand butterfly then you have to see them and you also have to uh, notice other things other animals other plants associated with them during while you are seeing them okay so it's it's very important to look for plants if you really want to concentrate on butterflies for your study or for your hobby whatever the reason you are concentrating on butterflies if you really want to know them well you need to know the plants while we are working in the forest looking for butterflies at many cases if we get to say certain plants in certain areas of the forest in spite of you know the scope of you know roaming around we tend to stay there near the plant for hours because if there is a plant which is a host plant of a rare butterfly there is a really really a great possibility of seeing that rare butterfly some at some point of time during the day near to its host plant so sometimes we try to find butterflies to plant even and also you know there are butterflies like the a fly so if in the forest there are uh, there are plants with aphid there are plants with insect which on which this uh, a fly or this uh, mottle type of butterflies they they are largely feed on so you can you stay there you concentrate in those patches and you will get to see those butterflies much easily otherwise randomly if you search for butterflies as small as a a fly and it's not a very colorful butterfly it's quite you know gray in color with brownish very faint marking so it's not very prominently marked butterflies as well so it's very hard to see them in the forest so what we do is when we get to see a host plant with a known host plant of a certain butterfly which we are not finding in a forest patch but we are seeing a good number of host plant and the butterfly distribution is there in that forest we prefer to stay close to those host plant rather than roaming around and you know trying to find that small butterfly in the bushes and hedges all through the forest so while watching butterflies all of us need to focus on the plants in which they are mostly seen you know there are a whole lot of plants you know in a forest but you will if you if you concentrate on your butterfly during your butterfly watching time you will get to see that there are plants even for you know just for sitting some butterfly is preferring some particular plant over all other plants so it's not about only laying egg or it's not about for the next thing they have choices they have strong choices and they tend to follow their choices very robustly so if we get to know that relation of a butterfly with some particular plants for different different reason then it will be much easier to find the butterflies in a forest or in a habitat rather than just to try to find them without associating them with the other elements of the forest so it's very very important you know to look for butterflies keeping in mind the other things that are found simultaneously with them all over so should be given to the like conservation of mammals or birds or any other multi species
sir from economic development to ask whether I can have my career in this field. Uh, who is that? Shivani, I am a printing technologist. So yes, definitely from economic background, you can have a career in this field. But you have to work harder than those who are having a, uh, you know, specialization in geology, botany, or certain subjects because they have, they are already trained. You have to get to know about certain terms and you know terminology, certain aspects of those subjects, and you have to read more than more about these animals because you have not read the technicalities of these subjects in which. You know, in general, wildlife studies are done. But definitely, from economics, from any background, you can you can be a part in butterfly research, and you can contribute a lot because it's more about your passion, more about your hard work, more about your you know common sense that gives you an edge over people with you know subjective knowledge, but without you know those type of things. If you if you are applying your common sense, if you have a sense of observation, if you know what you are seeing and what you are writing down, what are the other things that you are not asked to write down, but you are taking a note on those things, then you can definitely be a better worker than a trained geologist and can contribute more in this field. So I don't believe in subjective barrier in while studying butterflies. And I definitely believe that from any background, people can work with butterflies. Yes, they have to work hard and they have to give more time in the initial stage compared to those people who are coming from zoology, botanical, life science background in general. Uh, we have a question from Samadrita. Moths like Biston Bitularia proved industrial melanism after industrial revolution. So is there any such adaptive phenomenon observed in butterflies in recent era of climate change? Uh, this is from? Samadrita. Samadrita. So look, Samadrita, this climate thing, the whole thing is, when you are talking about climate and change, yes, we, we, we know that we are feeling a bit now. Definitely we are feeling a bit. We are seeing many things happening which are unusual climate wise. But even though I will say that to discuss any impact of climate change on any species, it will take at least 100, 150 years time. It will not happen. It will not get a very big change in a span of two, three, four, five years. But what is happening, you know, the climate change has immense impact on various aspects of a plant life with temperature and humidity and rainfall and so many other things, every plant has their own way of response. You know about spring, you know about uh, in, in, in India, we have actually six seasons, not four. But incidentally, because of climate change and because of our overuse of electricity and various other things, uh, the construction of our buildings and many other things, we have lost at least two things for sure, which are not prominently visible anymore. So we are left out with four, practically three, but you can say four. We have a spring, which is, again, which is almost like a jump from winter to summer. Very few days of spring still available, but it's changing. But these butterflies are dependent, as I said, that butterflies are thoroughly dependent on plants for, for various aspects, not only for laying egg or nectaring, for, you know, even for roosting and many other things. So what we are seeing now with the change of climate, with the change of weather rather, you know, uh, every year there are a shift of, uh, you know, the temperature getting higher either uh, from end of March or sometime in between April or some, maybe in cases in the first week of April, in cases second week of April, even sometime second week of March, we, we get in the summer days nowadays. So with that, we can get to see some butterflies on their wings, either a bit early this year compared to the other years. So with the spring, 
the new leaf starts coming up with the new leaf the butterfly starts emerging so that they can lay their eggs on the freshly emerged leaf so with the temperature uh, and with the other climatic conditions when the spring is set you know the when the spring time appears the plant life starts responding to that with the plants response the butterfly life which are there in form of other life stages then you know the butterfly has four life stages so either the uh, overwintering period is as egg or as pupae or sometimes even uh, you know uh, caterpillar which is very lethargic in a very lethargic way surviving during the winter period so they immediately when the spring you know spring time is there they change their life stages to the adult stage so that they can again lay egg in the fresh leaves so this thing you can see definitely you can see but uh, beyond this i am not in a position to comment because we need to look into the matter in details for years to comment whether there is something happening or not so that melanism which happened during the industrial revolution it was it was at least for a period of 45 to 50 years it took for this you know transformation a post independence the butterfly study in india was very slow it has again picked up from mid 90s 95 96 onwards slowly the last 25 years we have a decent idea about where are the species where are the butterflies in india now mostly seen which area is famous for what type of butterfly where we are getting good counts and where we are not getting that much of counts but honestly speaking beyond that we don't have much data yet we don't have much work done yet so there is an enormous opportunity for all of you to contribute uh, in this field and get to know about more and more things any other question so we have a question like why butterfly conservation should be given equal importance as conservation of mammals or birds or any other much discussed species how this importance can be conveyed easily okay so those who are into the subject those who are aware of various conservation measures in india and across the world conservation emphasis of conservation is given to animals like tigers all lions all leopards elephant Uh, giant panda bigger things which are which are in the apex of the food chain in cases or are very charismatic and which are very many significantly count in countable number means you know there are 3500 tigers 2200 say giant pandas i'm not i'm just saying numbers it not what i'm saying is right but it's like you can count that we have 30000 elephants there we have 45000 african elephants there or like this So even you can count their total number of animals present in a particular genus or that or whatever. But if you look at the result of those conservation, what is what has happened? So we have given a very sincere drive to protect our tiger, and the tiger number was below one thousand five hundred, and it is now more than three thousand. But during this period from when we have started and we have doubled the number of tigers we have lost at least 20% of their habitat so we are actually jamming up tigers in the tiger habitat we have much more tigers than the carrying capacity of a habitat and sooner or later you will get to see that in fighting of tigers you will see they are desperate try to disperse in other habitat and getting road killed or you know getting killed by people getting killed by mob or you know getting uh, under the railway train uh, dying in the railway track or all sort of certain things because we are only concentrating on the number game rather than as a whole conservation of a species or as a group of species butterflies and also if you are aware of there are two three very known we use a lot Uh, ideas of conservation the in situ conservation next to conservation 
when we are dealing with the bigger things where there are very specific type of parenting involved involved in you know increasing in the number like you, you, you need the tiger mom to take care of her kid for at least one and a half two years before they can roam on their own so there is a very strict parental care needed for all these animals and those animals for which this parental care is so much prominent exit to conservation is almost impossible you cannot take out 10 tiger cows from the forest and you know rear them in the cage and let them go in the forest when they are big enough they will simply die because they have not learned what a mother tiger teaches our kids but in case of insects in case of this type of animals we don't have a parental care in their different life stages or in their early stages they can be very well conserved in ex situ level as well but the importance of those animals are enormous because i i i am sure that we are very close to the real number of tiger that we know if we say there are 2500 tigers in the, on today's date then the time the number will not be less than 3000 and more than 4000 so there is a bracket so we know exactly that we have around 3 to 4000 tigers in india in the wild as of 259 2021 but we have we, we cannot even think of saying that we have how many number of grass yellows in india how many number of bees in india how many number of uh, monoclet cobra in india and all those things so the role played by these are enormous and they play a very important role for the well-being of the ecosystem, well-being of the habitat. And if you go by the Wildlife Protection Act, which is very important while we are thinking of conserving animals, because that protection act gives you an access to an animal or restrict an access of an animal from you to do research, to do various other things. And if you go by the conservation measure, as a student, if I ask you to conserve a pair of tiger of your own, you cannot do that because for to conserve a pair of tiger, you need 25 to 30 square kilometers of landscape with loads of prey base, good forest pads, water all through the year, and many other things. Whereas if I ask you to conserve butterflies in your school or college campus, what you just need to do is to set up an area with certain plants. Uh, out of your I money mean, selected out of your observations of water supply which are already present and you can get to see an increase in number within a span of a year so conservation of these type of animals which are providing support to the primary producer the plant life because you know butterflies are one of the one of the most prominent pollinators they are consumed by a huge number of other animals like birds geckos frog uh, you know and many other things other other insects spiders so they are a uh, very prominent secondary producer and they are very very much into conserving the primary producer as well so if you start conserving these animals the impact of this conservation effort which is not much, not much economically burdening, not much effort worthy in a sense, but the impact of conserving butterflies can be seen throughout the forest within a span of three, four years. So, conserving this smaller taxa, the lower group of animals, is a must to actually conserve the bigger thing. From our group, we always promote the word that if we can save our tigers means the butterfly tigers then i am sure that we will be able to save the tiger the you know the most charismatic animal of india so definitely we can save the tiger with the help of our tiger and we can save our tiger 
in a much easier way compared to the tiger. So it's very important to start conservation initiatives with smaller, less unknown group of animals and eventually create an impact on the higher taxa. Any more questions? We have a question from Prerna. Invasive plants like lantana are detri detrimental, but they support an ecology of their own, attracting butterflies. So how do we balance this ecological paradox? It's a very important question, Prerna. So, you know, we are, um, uh, we the people, we are, we are very creative in many things. So what we have done is when we get to know that lantana has many negative impact on the ecology and environment in India. In its own place, it has its own glory. But in India, it is troublesome for many other plants. So what we did is we have created lantana garden variety, which cannot propagate on their own. So they don't have seeds. They don't grow by their own. So if you put a garden variety lantana, it will support your butterflies, but it will not invade into the space of the native plants. So definitely, if you are creating a butterfly garden in a place which is very close to natural forest, you should not use even the garden variety lantana. You try to avoid that. But in urban landscape, you can definitely use those garden variety lantana, which is absolutely harmless in a sense that they cannot propagate and they cannot disturb the local plant biodiversity, local diversity of plants, and the butterflies are good. So you have to balance in that way, you have to use a judicial interaction of plants in consideration with the place where you are putting all those things. So if you are creating a butterfly habitat close to the natural habitat, natural forest, close to some national park or some places like that, try to avoid even using those sterile variety of garden variety of lantana because near the forest there will be many other plants which are regularly used by the butterflies as their nectar plants apart from lantana. But in urban landscape, in controlled landscape where there are no natural forests nearby, you can definitely use lantana because lantana gives you support throughout the year. It has flower all across the year. So they usually support the butterfly diversity and these varieties are incapable of Propagation, they cannot propagate on their own, and so they are not harmful for the local diversity, local plant diversity. Anything else? Yeah, question. Yeah, good evening, everyone. I'm Edunath here. I'm from Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Yes. Nice to be here. Uh, and uh, Arjun, you are. Uh, Answers to the questions are really uh, interesting and uh, really uh, uh, opening a new window to my knowledge. Actually, I, I just wanted to uh, know a uh, little more about uh, path integration and whether moths and butterflies are, are themselves having a homing behavior and how is their uh, neural structure or anything related to its environment and GPS uh, developed in the butterfly. Uh, uh, your question is impressive, but uh, I, say I don't have much knowledge of it. But what we have seen in our study, in our butterfly garden, that yes, in cases, even the butterflies, they come back to the same place, individual, individual specimen, for roosting for days. And in many cases, they don't come back. So they, uh, we are yet to establish any pattern of that. And we are we are looking for it. We are definitely monitoring them on a regular basis. We do a lot of mark recapture type of work as well. But honestly speaking, beyond that, beyond what we have already seen, we have much knowledge. Yeah, Jim, because I just uh, got this got 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 into this because. I'm basically a bird watcher, and uh, I've just uh, uh, just observed in a lot of other arthropods, especially insects, 
like ants and other honey bees and other things who uh, whom they do have a home for themselves and their uh, neural uh, neuro uh, neural pathway and their uh, way to back way back to home has been studied in lot and i just want, want to have a doubt about butterflies and moths you know is part of the what you uh, what i have mentioned in the very beginning of my talk that those yeah. who can, those who are social insect they have okay. their way to home they are way back to their home they use okay. lot of chemicals on their path they communicate with chemicals and they are very well studied as well so it's easy to study them na but they come back to us and come back to the same place every day but insects which are solitary don't have a home which don't have a hive which don't have a burrow it's very hard to study them like this even after marking because when we go mark picture we have to get back beyond 10 to 15 percent of our mark Mark on a basis, so they keep on dispersing the habitat in a very different way compared to the social insect. So studying solitary insects are tough, and studying solitary insects which are so much agile and so much you know mobile during their daytime activity, like butterflies, tough for them. So, but still we are trying to you know do some study. And we are getting some results as well. So we have seen some of the species, some of the specimen came back to the same place or uh, are seen in the same place for quite uh, for quite few days. But to give you a conclusive statement of the species, we are not yet ready to certain answer to this question right now. We need to work a lot to saying something on that. Okay, thanks, sir. John, especially with butterflies uh, who are migrants. Actually, if if you see, for example, uh, taking a biosphere, maybe Nilgiri biosphere, there are certain mm-hmm. house plants and there are certain butterflies which which actually live in that area and they uh, reproduce and then again they develop. So this is how their uh, life cycle is. But for yeah, some butterflies, yeah. which travel so, together, and that there should be a path actually. So, the, so that's what I am. Uh, Actually, yeah. Uh, what what you told about the Nilgiri or any area, the, there are there is a term yeah, associated with that called endemicity. So there are certain yeah. butterflies which are restricted in certain geographical areas. So you will get to see them within that area or around that area, and you are not going to see them beyond that area or you know beyond a certain extent of that area. So the endemic to that region. But there are butterflies which are commonly seen not only in India but in entire Southeast Asia. There are butterflies which are seen in Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, everywhere. Common. So you know, even for the endemic species, they are compared to those which are generalized species and seen everywhere. To really get an idea of this, an idea about their life cycle, even life stages, because. In a country like India, where there are so many different geological regions, and you know, with temperature variation, elevation will change. Even the common species are habituated with certain part of certain type of behavior in one area, differs a lot in the other areas. So there is, it's very hard to you know just uh, prototype them in a way and try to work with them. That prototype all across the places that they are found. So we need a lot of lot of work on uh, this aspect, and then only we can, you know, say something on that. So why I thought of having this interaction is to tell these ideas because there are even scope of work with the butterfly. All across India, all across they are present, and wherever they are present, the urban landscape, in the rural landscape, in different different parts, different different habitats, different elevation and so on. And those are just just not neglected butterflies. It's important to know what butterflies are there in one particular area or one particular habitat. But it is more important to know how they are dealing. Their habitat, how they are utilizing their habitat, how they are 
utilizing the list of how to interact with other species, how they are distinguishing themselves from other species, and those things are tremendously, you know, interesting. They're very good to work with, and one can spend his or her entire life doing that. So beyond butterfly watching is the idea in which from BBM next year we will be emphasizing. This year we are emphasizing on habitat. Habitat means it's not about just you love to see butterfly. If you really love butterflies, if you really love to see butterflies, it is important to create habitat for them and it is important to know about what a butterfly habitat needs. What are the needs of a butterfly habitat? How you can stay or on which basis you can stay? This is a habitat where we can have butterflies and on what basis you can, can say that this is not the ideal place for a butterfly. If you don't have these ideas, you will be spending a whole lot of time without much result if you don't understand the habitat for which is suitable for butterfly or not. So in the next BBM, what we are looking for is when you know what is a habitat of a butterfly, then you must also know what our butterfly, what our species of butterfly or what all the species of butterfly are doing in that habitat, how they are sharing the resources, how they are spending their time, whether they are interacting with each other or not, whether they are particularly, uh, there is a cluster of butterflies which are even from different, different genus, they are roaming around in one places or there are butterflies which don't like other species as a whole or how they are dealing with the whole system. And to understand those, you need to spend time with the butterflies. We, we always tend to see new butterflies or we always tend to see butterflies which are uncommon in our place. But in these particular cases, we, we must look for butterflies which are common and what they are doing throughout the day in a particular habitat or in a particular locality. Once we start observing these things, then we get to know about many aspects of a butterfly life and many aspects of a butterfly life in a way to which we can actually design a conservation plan. Unless we know the habit of a butterfly, the requirement of a butterfly, their engagement with other species in a habitat, you cannot plan a conservation plan to save them. So to save butterfly to start conserving butterfly. From BBM, what we are looking for is, initially we are looking for what butterflies are there in your locality, in your surroundings, in the nearby forest where you live. Then we did what, what we try to emphasize is, how, if you see a butterfly, what is the reason to see a butterfly in a particular place? So you have to understand the place, the habitat of a butterfly, and in which which type of habitat, what type of butterflies are mostly seen. Now, going beyond this, we are trying to get an idea of what are they doing throughout the day, how they are dealing with all the odds and you know crises and you know pressure like predation, and how they are surviving. So, our next BBM's uh, objective will be to understand butterfly ethology to understand butterfly behavior to the next level so that one can actually start planning conservation initiative for a butterfly. Unless we know the habit of a tiger, the requirement of a tiger, the need of water of a tiger, the need of food of a tiger, the need of shelter of a tiger, we cannot think of conserving tiger. So we have spent a lot of time to understand what a tiger need in a true sense in different elevational level, in different different landscape in India, and then only we can contribute a bit in increasing the number from a significantly low to a moderately safer number. That too, we have not given enough emphasis on the carrying capacity of the habitat. So in spite of having good number of tigers, we are always in a state of losing the entire population because of the overpopulated landscape because more, all the habitat they are having much more number of tigers 
which should be there. So they have exceeded their, the carrying capacity of our habitat by and large. That's why while we are discussing with butterflies, we are giving enough emphasis on understanding habitat, creating habitat, and you know, make sure that with the number of with the increase in number of butterflies, we must also increase the number of habitat, we must also increase various types of habitat for butterflies. So that if we really manage to increase the number of butterflies, they get a better chance to survive, they get their adequate resources, they get adequate place to stay. And when we will be able to you know, know what butterflies are there, we, we will be able to create habitat for them, depending on their presence and you know, their association with plants. Now we are asking to understand people about their habit, because again, it's not only plant and butterfly, it's various kinds of plants or various kinds of activities for a butterfly. So where they love to sleep in the, during the night, means where they love to roost during the night, that area may be otherwise ignored throughout the day, not invaded throughout the day. So if you keep your butterfly working uh, cycle from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day, day after day you keep on watching them during that band of time, you will not know how they are surviving the rest of the day. And that is much more than, so 8 to 3 is around 7 hours. In a 24 hour days, you take out 7 hours, you are left out with 17 hours. So you know very well that 7 hours what they are doing, but how they are surviving the longer, much longer, almost double the time, and where they are surviving during that particular time, if you are clueless about that, you cannot make a conservation plan. So this is why this uh, whole idea of this talk was, and I have expected much more interactive uh, you know, audience. Uh, anyhow, there are some good questions, definitely some good questions, but keep your questions ready for us. Uh, we are available throughout the year. We can get to connect with us in the social media all through the year. And you can write to us, you can write to the PBM group as a whole and start looking butterflies beyond their identification, beyond their you know mere presence. Try to look at them, try to look at their habits, try to look at their behavior, try to understand what they are using in a particular habitat and try to ensure that those things which are needed by them, which are utilized by them in a particular habitat, remain conserved. That's how you can actually fruitfully conserve butterflies. Thank you, Arjanda, and thanks to all the participants. So, yeah, I'm ending the meet today. Thank you. Bye -bye.